Yo, what's going on, Ben? What you up to? Yo, I'm just playing this new board game I found online. It's called Backgammon by Lord of the Board. Man, this game is fun. And they're actually sponsoring today's video. Lord of the Board is a free backgammon game you can play anytime, anywhere you want. Cool thing about this game is you can play it on iPhone, Android, and a lot of other different platforms. This game is super fun and super easy to learn, and the best thing about it is it's free. You guys, I'm also in a game right now, and man, it's a little, it's a little hard sometimes, especially whenever you're getting a little competitive. So all I need is some good dice rolls and get all my checkers off the board, and I win. If you guys aren't familiar with Backgammon, it's a, basically a board game where there's two players, and you get to roll some dice, and the main objective of the game is to get all your checkers off the board. And the first player to get all their checkers off the board wins. And honestly, guys, it might sound easy, but it gets competitive sometimes. And guys, don't worry. There will always be people to play against. There's millions of users worldwide or you can play against your friends and family. And another cool thing about Lord of the Board Backgammon is you can also create your own profile and you get daily rewards for signing in every time you play. There's also a lot of cool different boards to choose from and a lot of different dice. But guys, my collection is looking pretty cool. I got a couple boards and a couple cool looking dice. So what are you guys waiting for? Go ahead and click the link down below to download Lord of the Board Backgammon for free and also receive 500 free coins. So come on guys, go ahead and click that link down below, get those 500 coins that are waiting on you. All right guys, so I kind of just been playing for like an hour already this game is super addicting but now it's time to get back to the build What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be back to work on my 1965 Ford Mustang. As you guys seen in the previous episode, we did go ahead and build the entire firewall back here and it turned out absolutely perfect. A lot of people were talking about the strength of the firewall and guys, this is a lot thicker than the original steel. And I talked to a lot of uh, people, especially the guys that actually build Mustangs from Cortex Racing and they said that's going to be perfectly fine. It's strong enough for what it's going to be for. And then we also kind of just threw the fenders on. I kind of just wanted to get a little bit of a lineup just to see how everything is fitting up. And I'm gonna be honest guys, these aftermarket fenders do not fit as good as the OEM ones. As you can see like right here on the door, it's pretty pretty out of alignment, but that may be just because I kind of just bolted everything on there really quick. Really was just kind of in a rush. I wanted to just get them on there. And then we also have the engine kind of just sitting in there just on this, uh, engine hoist right here nothing's set in stone yet we are still waiting on our engine mounts you know sometimes stuff gets delayed but that's okay because there's a lot of other stuff that we can do before we actually need the engine mounts as for instance we did also order this racing radiator right here it's nice beefy uh, it's a three row radiator and I think it's gonna be a perfect amount of cooling that we need because it's a little bit bigger than the factory radiator. And guys, check it out. It fits literally perfect in between the frame rails. There's a good amount of space between there, which is pretty cool. Because when I was ordering it, I thought it was gonna be a little bit too big, but it fits in there. We might even notch it a little bit because I also wanna remove this uh, factory bracing in the front right here and maybe replace it with something a little bit stronger just so it could tie the front end uh, better instead of having this right here because it's just on spot welds right there and i don't really want to just weld it up because it won't look too good so guys in this video what i want to mainly focus on is getting this engine bay knocked out because i want to get the suspension on this car i think we're going to leave it mildly uh, similar to stock with like the wheel sizes and everything i don't think we're going to do like a massive wide body or anything like kind of like what i was thinking before which I think it might just be better, almost like a stock look. Maybe just tiny little fender flares that you can actually just get and just put them on and it'll look a little bit better than factory. But we're just gonna focus on getting these uh, firewalls built, or not the firewalls, the aprons built out. And it's crazy how much room there is in this engine bay. Like when we first put this engine in here, it just looked massive. But then once we put the fenders on, as you can see, there's a lot of room actually over here. So we're gonna have to just Pretty, it's gonna be pretty simple to build these uh, aprons right here. The factory ones won't really weld up to our firewall there. And I don't really like them because they do have the cut out and you have to weld everything up. It's a lot more work. And I think custom's the way to go. So guys, the way I'm gonna be building these front aprons, it's gonna be pretty simple. I basically just wanna run a tube like this right here underneath 
the fender right here and that's gonna bolt to the fender. And then we're gonna use our steel that we actually had left over from the firewall. It's actually over here. And I think we'll have just enough to build the firewalls or the aprons right here. It's a little bit thicker than the factory ones. And honestly guys, I don't think I'm gonna bead roll anything because I really like the flat look of like engine bays when everything's just nice and flat. And once we get everything nice and painted out in here, it's just gonna look like an insane sh show car, but it's really a race car. And I don't think it's gonna be actually too hard to build. I mean, we built that firewall in about a day, I think, a couple hours. So that wasn't too hard. And we already reinforced basically the body to that. And then this entire uh, apron, once we build everything and weld everything together, it's gonna reinforce this front end pretty much as strong as it can possibly get because we want this thing to be tight. We don't want all, we want all the clearances to be perfect. So I think now what we need to do is probably go ahead and rip this engine out of here, take this radiator out, and then just go ahead and start thinking on how we're gonna do this. Radiator. All right. I'm so glad we bought this thing, dude. This thing is. Like 300 bucks. The big Bertha. This is the big Bertha. Oh, I need to go get my engine stand from there, too. Oh, yeah. Slowly migrating stuff, you know, getting See, new stuff. What you don't understand is that you could have taken a lot of stuff back to this shop, but you just left it over there for the board. But I mean, I kind of just want, yeah, I left it for them and I kind of wanted to get all new stuff because, like, all of that stuff was just old. And... Yeah. Look how big this thing is. Holy moly. Man. Wait, did that company, did they set you up with turbos, right? Yeah. <laughs> we got twin turbos on yeah. the way. I want to make 700 at the engine. Oh. About 600 at the wheels. Hmm. I mean, with that, new, with that new suspension from Cortex, it's gonna be perfect. Oh yeah, and then once we get the rear suspension set up, it's gonna be legit. Plus, once we build this, oh my gosh, it's a naked car. So guys, check out how far we came out with just all this stuff right here. Everything is good to go. And you guys probably remember I did weld these caps on and a lot of people were wondering what happened with the bolts inside. Well, I actually welded the bolts to this actual thing. So whenever we go to unscrew it, the bolt doesn't spin inside. And if we ever do have an issue, I'll drill two nice holes right here and then probably pop some grommets on it later. So now all we gotta do is basically just sit down and figure out exactly how we're gonna build these aprons. I might even get some cardboard out and do a little bit of cutting and designing. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some cardboard, do some cardboard aided design, and we'll probably go ahead and drop a time lapse and show you guys exactly how we're gonna build these aprons. I don't want this to just be flat, you know what I'm saying? 
So guys, we got most of the cardboard aided design built up over here. We got both aprons made, but I'm having a little bit of a dilemma. I'm not too sure how I'm gonna do exactly this. So this is the first option right here. As you can see, we have these two aprons that are just gonna come all the way down. But the thing is, there's gonna be a lot of open space in here. So either we do it like this, it's gonna save us metal. We put the fender, the fenders are gonna go perfectly right here. And this is just gonna be seamless perfectly to the fender right there. Or I got another idea where I would, instead of doing this, I would actually bend this piece. Basically, if this was metal, I would bend it up and then put it just like this. And it would be flush with uh, the back of the firewall right here. But the only thing that would cause would basically, there would just be a big old flat spot right here which I don't know if I really wanna make a big old flat spot in the engine bay. Maybe it would look clean, maybe it wouldn't, but this would take a little bit more metal because I'd have to bend it and then I'd have to make another piece that comes out right here and then welds to the actual fender design. But guys, I'm kind of still thinking, but see, that's the cool thing about cardboard. It's not a final design just yet. So we can, you know, we can do like, you can adjust it as much as you want. And, but the thing about doing it this way right here, the engine would be like really closed in. So if I had to like change spark plugs or do anything like that, it's gonna be a lot harder getting in here like that. But if we do it this way, it's gonna be easier, which I'm thinking maybe just doing it this way and then later I can get some aluminum covers that are gonna basically come out right here and cover up most of the engine bay. But as you can see, we got the radiator in here. Everything is lining up pretty good. I mean, I, I love doing this kind of stuff. I love doing, I love doing more, more designing and more thought behind it versus just like, you know, on that last Mustang, I was just cutting. I wasn't really thinking stuff through, but now on this car, you know, I'm thinking everything through, thinking the best solution for the aprons on this car. And then you can see on this side right here, I went ahead and made a little indention because this is where the uh, Hydro Boost cylinder is gonna go, which I'm thinking about doing that, or I could jam it underneath inside and make it even cleaner but then that would be a lot of issues, not issues, but it would just be a lot harder to get the brake lines in that crammed area, especially if we weld all this together, you won't really be able to get inside there if anything does go wrong. So I'm thinking maybe we put it out here and then we can just cover it up with like aluminum sheet or some kind of titanium. So after doing a little bit more research and looking at more engine bays online, I think we are gonna go with the pretty much, this is kind of like the factory look of the engine bay and I found this super cool car i guess this was built by the ring brothers and as you can see everything is kind of just flat there's not really much of an area that's pushed in towards the engine and it gives it a lot more space and it looks really cool in there cool fact about those hinges right there those things are like two thousand dollars i think ring brothers they make a lot of aftermarket parts for these mustangs but everything's super high end so i think we are going to go with the exposed look uh, make it a lot bigger just so there's more room in the engine bay and it's going to look cleaner so i think this is going to be the final design because as you guys see in the factory firewall or the factory aprons are just similar exactly like this except they do have a couple of dimples or they're a little bit rolled and then they have the cutout right there for the strut tower so i think we're just going to go ahead and do it this way right here which is going to give it that super clean look so whenever you pop the hood on this car everything is just nice and flat and just going to look amazing so guys i'm gonna go ahead and do a lot more trimming finalize all these pieces and then we can start transferring all this onto metal and get this thing done. So guys, we got all the cardboard nice and lined up. It took like an hour to get everything cut to size and I went ahead and took it off because I was getting ready to start putting the fenders on, which means I had to put the door on and I took a little better look at this door right here. We actually forgot to sandblast it and when I was going to put it back on, I did notice that this thing is kind of jacked up. If you look right here, all this area right here is dented up and I did have a brand new set of doors on the 66 fastback which is the same exact thing so i figured you know what why not let's go ahead and just slap those new doors on they're not going to need anything maybe a little bit of body filler versus having to cut rust out of these doors i know they're original and i wish i could have kept them but it's just going to save us a lot of time and honestly guys these doors line up just as good as the other doors this door is just going to need a little bit on this edge right here as you can see it's kind of like i guess they made the design a little wrong so we're going to need to add a little bit of metal to there but this side lines up perfectly and so does the the passenger side and that's just gonna save us a lot of time these things literally just need a nice sand and primer and they're ready for paint I think there's a couple of dents but we do have the maxi dent fix 
equipment so we'll be able to fix those up. Now what I want to do is go ahead and basically put the fenders on. I want to line them up perfectly over here and then I'll probably get this metal bar and set them perfectly aligned. And I also brought the hood from the car which is sitting over there and we can go ahead and line everything up, get the fenders perfectly in place and then that'll give us a 100% measurement with the cardboard and where the fenders actually need to go so then we can trim the cardboard a little bit more because I kind of put the cardboard up and I didn't do it precisely. I wanted to wait till I get the fenders on them, then I can line everything up and then we can transfer all that to metal and make these metal aprons. In the arms of my... All right, guys, so we got both of these fenders on. Now it's time to get them in the perfect position. I'm gonna be using this uh, technique designed by Ford. Did you ever reply to those uh, Ford emails when they sent you about uh, getting a position? They seven. kept asking me, but they just weren't offering me enough money, so I was like. Weren't they like, offering you like lead uh, body so, design? I think, yeah, I think it was like 100 million a year, but I said, nah. Yeah, see, we're still using parts from that car. You think you'd hold that for a second? Yeah, you probably have to hold it in the center. Now hold it in the center, just push it together. You have no respect for these muscle parts, Ben. No respect. Dude, it's been sitting in the attic safely and securely. All right. You know, you're starting to sound like the comment section. That's that's what I'm saying. You don't think I'm in that comment section? Probably are. So check it out guys, we got the fenders on the car. I also went ahead and I went to the other shop and I picked up my old uh, front bezel from my other Mustang. So don't worry guys, that memory of that car lives on. Uh, we got it on right here. And then I also put this lower valance on right here just so we can get the bottom of the fenders perfectly aligned with the car. We got the top aligned and man, it's looking pretty good. Kind of just mocking everything up so then once we do build all the aprons everything lines up 100 percent perfect i don't want to be like boring out holes and having all kinds of different mistakes on there so we just line that up now i kind of want to throw the hood on and just see how all the gaps are going to be okay all right pretty much just going to slide up into here how they go so we got the hood on the car and honestly it lines up pretty good. The only issue we're having right now is uh, the front of the fenders are a little bit too far together. As you can see, the gap in the back is pretty good. It is kind of sitting all the way down because there's no hood latch or hood shuts. And then same thing on this side. So the rear is good. The only thing we're gonna need to do is kind of just push the front of these fenders apart a little bit and that'll make our gap perfect in the front and perfect in the back. Check it out, we went ahead and put the CAD design uh, templates in there and then I went ahead and just trimmed it exactly perfectly with the fender exactly how we want it now that we have the fenders perfectly aligned on the car that's kind of why I wanted to put the fenders on so we know exactly how to make it because it's not really it's kind of like a downward slope all the way down just like that and we got both sides on man it does look freaking awesome yeah I think this is going to be a better option than what I was thinking earlier versus putting it up like that. This is gonna give us a lot more clearance and maybe we can even add up some more other stuff inside the engine bay. We'll see about that later, but dang, that looks amazing. And then all we'll have to do is basically grab these cardboard templates, take them off here, uh, put it on our metal, transfer everything over, plasma cut it, grind everything up, and bam, we have a fully complete engine bay. This thing is gonna be pretty freaking nice. 
Honestly, guys, this is a lot better than the factory aprons that we would have put in here. They're super weak, they're flimsy, they're really good for nothing. And the reason why you might be noticing right here, the cardboard kind of stops right here because I kind of ran out, but I can honestly just, whenever I go to transfer it under the metal, I can just add a little bit more just to bring this apron all the way out here. And that's kind of the reason why I also put on this grill right here so we can see what's going on over here and see if anything is in the way. So that way, once we do cut all the templates out, we're not messing anything up. So guys, also go ahead and drop a comment down below if you guys have any suggestions on how to do it the professional way, because I know you guys are pretty good at them, uh, keyboard typing things. So, you know, just drop some comments. Tell me what you guys honestly think of this. Honestly, I think it's gonna be perfect. We even got the little cutout right there for the brake booster. We're gonna try to find a small one that fits in there perfectly. Hopefully, I think they do sell them. I've seen a couple on eBay that will fit perfectly right there. But I think what we're gonna do is we're not gonna cut this out yet in the in the temp, in the metal piece that we make we're gonna just leave it like this and then once our brake booster comes in we can just push it down and see exactly how we need to do that right now we're gonna just clean everything up go ahead and bring our plasma cutter bring our welder get everything set up and then we'll be good to start building these aprons so guys we got all the metal all the welders all set up but unfortunately you guys are gonna have to wait for the next episode i want to hear all y'all's opinions on how this is going to work out if you think it's good if you think it's bad so make sure you go ahead and drop those down below we also do have a little build over there can't show you guys too much of it it's actually the first japanese car on the channel and actually came from the goon squad so make sure you stay tuned for that so in the next video we will go ahead and build out this entire uh, apron section i just really want to hear those comments see what you guys think you know may maybe even our engine mounts will be here for our engine so then we can like slap the engine in and continue designing and building this entire front end of this car but guys that's gonna be a wrap for today's video and make sure you head over to vtune.com to check out the new fire merch we got coming out soon but if you enjoyed the video go ahead and hit that subscribe button drop a like on instagram we post a lot of sneak peeks behind the scenes a lot of cool stuff thanks for watching